grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. It was another in the fire. Standing next to me, there was another in the waters, holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free? There is a cross that bears the burden, where another died for me. There is another in the fire. Dead left for dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore Should I fall in the space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way I won't bow to the things of this world I know I will never be alone There is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding What power set me free There is a grave that holds nobody that power lives in me There is another in the fire Nothing seems 
between us Nothing stands between us There'll be another in the fire Standing next to me There'll be another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding How could you be to me I'll count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle cause I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle I know that's where you'll be I'll count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be stories of what they think you're like but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good Good Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, when I've seen many searching far and wide but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say your words you're a good good father it's who you are Call me deeper 
still as you call me Deeper still into love Love, love, you're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am I am your a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Because you are. Hello and welcome to Innovation Church. Well, we are super excited that you have chosen Innovation to be your place of worship. So wherever you are watching today's message, welcome and thank you once again. Today I want to talk to you about worship. See, I think there is much value in worship. In fact, worship and relationship, they work hand in hand. You see, worship and relationship are intertwined together when it comes to God. Having an attitude of worship allows us to stand strong before God. For God loves it when you and I have a spirit of worship. Let me begin by asking you a question. When you hear the word worship, what comes to mind? Church, music, people, singing, praising, 
What if I told you worship is much more than that? What if I told you worship is a continual, constant, ongoing lifestyle of expression? You see, I looked up the word expression and it means the action of making known one's thoughts or feelings. So worship becomes an action of continual expression of your feelings towards God. Here's another question. What are your feelings towards God right now? Has God done enough in your life for you to worship Him continuously? I also looked up the word worship and it means to honor a divine power. So what does the Bible have to say about this? Well, let's go to Jeremiah 32, 17. Jeremiah 32, 17. Ah, Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Let's go to 2 Peter 1, 3. 2 Peter 1, 3. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know Him. The one who called us to Himself by means of His marvelous glory and excellence. Okay, I want you to repeat after me. God is divine and all-powerful. On the count of three. Wherever you are. One, two, three. God is divine and all-powerful. Okay, that was good. One more time. God is divine and all-powerful. Amen. When we understand this, worship takes on a new and, and fresh meaning. See, worship is more than just singing at church. That is a small portion of worship. I will show you three biblical examples of worship. The first one is Paul and Silas singing in prison. So if you have your Bibles, let's just go to Acts 16, Acts chapter 16, verses 24 through to 26. Acts 16, 24 through to 26. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Wow, what, an, what a sight. I don't know about you, but if I had been beaten and bruised, I don't think that I would want to sing and, and praise. I would be very upset and I'm sure that you too would be angry and frustrated. But here Paul and Silas, they decided to sing. They decided to praise God. This is no ordinary song service, considering that this duet was coming from two men who were beaten, bruised, and in shackles. Their worship was pure, heartfelt, and honest. This song caught heaven's attention, and when God started tapping his foot to the music, amazing things happened. And we know the story that the jailer and his family found salvation through the actions of Paul and Silas at midnight. Example number two, the woman with the alabaster box. Luke chapter 7, verse 36 and 38. Luke chapter 7, verses 36 and 38. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. Some of the greatest worship came from the most unlikely source. 
This woman was an outcast who had been used and abused. But something about the words and actions of Jesus caused her to bring her most valuable possession and pour it out in an expression of love and worship. In one moment, she pressed through fear, shame, and created one of the most intimate and memorable moments of worship that is found in the Bible. An example number three, the widow's might. Mark chapter 12, verse 41 through 44. Mark chapter 12, verse 41 through 44. Jesus sat down near their collection box in the temple and watched as the crowds dropped in their money. Many rich people put in large amounts. Then a poor widow came and dropped in two small coins. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I tell you the truth. This poor widow has given more than all others who are making contributions. For they gave a tiny part of their surplus but she poor as she is has given everything she had to live on this simple act of giving an offering in the temple caught the attention of the Lord it wasn't how much she gave but rather how much it cost her personally that moved Jesus to say she gave more than anyone else what is clear is that God considers our giving an act of worship. Three completely different stories, but with one common denominator. Worship. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. So whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God splendor, beauty, wonder of God, emphasis included. Worship is a lifestyle. Turn to the person next to you and say, worship is a lifestyle. Worship is a lifestyle. Here's a question. What are some of your lifestyle habits? What are some of your lifestyle habits? The brush your teeth, drink water, have a shower, exercise, perhaps check your Instagram and Facebook, read your Bible, weekend away with your closest friends. You see, worship is a lifestyle, a routine, not something that we do for 30 minutes once a week. Worship is simply the expression, magnificence, the brilliance, the excellence of a heart that is full of gratitude and all at the splendor of God. When our hearts are in a position to worship everything, and I mean everything we do becomes worship, not just our singing and lifting our hands. Worship is a heart condition that trusts and praises the fullness and wholeness of Christ. We do this because of who God is in our life. Worship is the way we show our love and respect to God for who God is and what God has done for us. Once again, worship is a lifestyle. We don't start and stop to worship God. We live it daily, 24-7, 365 days a year for a lifetime. God is worthy of all our respect, praise, and attention. Each day, He provides us with all the comforts to sustain your life, my life. God opens up doors for us to experience joy and feel the presence of His hope daily. He gave up His Son, Jesus, so that we could have a relationship with Him. As Father, God is creative. God is generous. God is trustworthy. God is dependable. God is loyal. God is worthy of our praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So if we only make Saturday 
So if, if we only make Saturday morning church gathering the totality of our worship, we will set ourselves up to fail Monday through to Friday. God made each day, not just Saturday, not just one day, in other words. Let's give all our attention to the inspiring artist, God, who paints the most beautiful sceneries each moment and provides for us all the resources we need to get through each day. Praise God. Honor God. Let's admire God. Let's bow before God. Let's live for God. Let me leave you with, with this last question. So when it comes to worship, what, what is God looking for? What is God looking for when it comes to worship? And it's found in John chapter 4, verses 23 through to 24. John chapter 4, 23 through to 24. And I'm reading from the message version. It's who you are and the way you live that counts before God. Did you get that? It is who you are and the way you live that counts before God. That's powerful. Your worship must engage your spirit in the pursuit of truth. That's the kind of people the Father is out looking for. Those who are simply and honestly themselves before Him in their worship. God is sheer being itself, spirit. Those who worship Him must do it out of their very being, their spirit, their true selves in adoration. I hope you realize the significance of what John was writing right there. You see, when it comes to worship, it's not about the loud music. It's not about the, the fairy lights. It's much more than that. It's your lifestyle, the way that you live, the way that you engage, the way that you speak. Every single day we are worshiping God. See, when it comes to worship, you need to have a spirit of action and an attitude for a relationship with Jesus. You shouldn't wake up in the morning and have to decide whether you're going to read the Bible or not. It needs to be an automatic action. You shouldn't have to decide whether you want to love Jesus today. It needs to be an automatic action. Worship done in truth, and we know that truth is Jesus. So worship done in truth will always lead you to a lifestyle of automatic action. I pray that that will be the case in Jesus' name. So let's add value. So let's add, add value to our everyday worship. Let not worship be just one day, but let worship be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Let's do it over again. Let us do worship 24-7. Let us be a shining light on a hill. Let's pursue truth. Let's pursue truth that is found in, in none other than Jesus. There's no other name but Jesus. For He is the real reason. For He is the real reason for our worship. Remember, your future is bright because God wants to do a new thing. Well, thank you so much again for joining us today at Innovation. If you enjoyed today's message, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and not forgetting to click on that notification bell so whenever a new video gets uploaded, you will be notified. Don't forget to check out our Instagram page, This Is Innovation, for more great content. Until next time, take care, be safe, and know your future is bright in Jesus.